after nature of enzymes now we would look at these enzymes uh, classes one by one so let's discuss proteases as the name suggests that proteins are uh, broken down by these enzymes that was that is why uh, these enzymes are known as proteases uh, these uh, proteases can be further uh, said to be in two classes for example it could be proteinases or peptidases the proteinases are the one that would be breaking down the complex uh, protein molecules into smaller chains uh, peptones or uh, peptides uh, polypeptides or simpler peptides and then these peptides are again acted upon by um, other proteinases called as peptidases as the name suggests these peptidases would be breaking down these peptide chains into smaller uh, fatty acids uh, smaller so, um, amino acid because amino acids are the component of uh, proteins so these amino acids are then released from the protein by the action of peptidases so proteinases are the first action and then the second action takes place by peptidases so the proteins complex proteins are converted into simpler amino acids if we talk about the application of these uh, enzymes in meat uh, they are more uh, active in case of fish meat uh, rather than other uh, like beef or cattle meat uh, these fish enzymes are quite active uh, even at very very different temperature uh, especially when the fish is eviscerated by eviscerated it is mean when the intestinal component are removed from the fish these enzymes even uh, keep working at the refrigeration temperature as well Uh, on the other hand when the uh, when the fish is not eviscerated for, for example it is all intact it is caught it is uh, uh, handled uh, in a way when it is not actually cut upon uh, these uneviscerated fish would have uh, concentrated enzyme present in the uh, structure called as uh, pyloric cecca this is attached to the intestine and this is an area where the concentration of enzymes is there so these enzymes keep on breaking down the complex structure into simpler structure and uh, these would continue uh, the production of simpler compounds so that would mean they would be acting upon these fish tissue and the shelf life would be reduced and that is why fish don't have that longer shelf life as compared to uh, other meats because the deteriorative actions that are taken place by these enzymes present there they would accelerate the spoilage process uh if you talk about what fish are generally more um, uh, prone so normally the family of uh, herring and mackerel families are normally uh, uh, very much subjected to enzyme deterioration uh, even uh, when especially when they are caught feeding these enzymes are more active and these enzymes keep on working even after they have been um, uh, they have been caught and they have been stored uh, in the dif- different lower temperatures if you talk about the other uh, seafood lobsters they also um, are they have high proteolysis enzymes these enzymes are there but one of the technique is uh, it can be uh, um, it can the, the we need to slow down these uh, deteriorative changes or we need to slow down the action of these proteolysis enzymes um, otherwise they would be acting upon many of the proteins and these proteins are broken down into amino acids these amino acids are soluble in water so that would mean actually it would be liquefying the product this steps uh, or process happens in fish as well as in other seafood such as lobsters and shrimps etc uh and this especially happens in the the tail region as well where very little amount of that tail is actually visible at the end when we consume this kind of product because most of the uh, proteins have been broken down and the meat has been liquefied and it is not uh, it doesn't have a structure that we can actually feel in case of shrimps uh, if we can remove their heads after we catch them uh, the deteriorative process can be slowed down because the enzymes proteinases uh, they would be not much functional in this situation uh why we have this uh, high activity of enzymes in especially seafood because we are talking about seafood here um the these enzymes are active because they have the all the seafood live in 
uh, water in the control condition or the control temperature, the temperature variations are not there. So these enzy enzymes are very much um, adjusted to this kind of temperature and this uh, activity keeps on working even if we change that temperature uh, after we um, after we catch these animals or store these animals. Uh, enzymes are there in the plant sources as well. So they can have uh, different enzymes, although they do not play the similar role as we discussed in case of seafood, that they are not deteriorating uh, these uh, plant materials, uh, but they are there. Some of the examples are uh, the bromelain is found in pineapple. Uh, when we heat pineapple, this bromelain, uh, it can be inactivated. But the people who handle these pineapple uh, in the industries normally, their hands get very much affected by this uh, bromelain because this is a proteinase that would break down the skin. So it would be badly affect affecting skins or it, even the bleeding can take place if people are working for a longer time with the pineapple, if they are handling pineapple for a longer time. So this is a phenomena that can be observed due to this. Um, we know papaya uh, is a fruit that has got uh, an enzyme called as papain. Uh, papain is a protease again, or this protease breaks down the complex proteins into simpler ones. And the most common example we can see is that the papaya is used as a meat tenderizer. Why it is used as a meat tenderizer? Because these uh, proteinases break down the complex structure of meat into a simpler structures and by this process it softens the meat so that's why it tenderizes the meat and these enzymes are used and similarly other plant hormone plant enzymes are also used for various applications that we will discuss in the coming lectures